You need to be afraid for your life. But if you let those wounds become scars, you're gonna look at yourself one day and not recognize what you see. The interesting thing we found going into season two is that we're actually creeping back towards a little more of the look and feel of Cloak and Dagger, the comics, where we're on the ground, we're dealing with human trafficking, we're dealing with some real life issues, and we're dealing with the children, particularly young women of the world who are lost in America. And as we started breaking it out, we're like, you know, we didn't do this intentionally because we wanted it to be its own thing, but we have creeped not only into a little bit more of the tone of the comic, even though we've changed the location, but you know, we were able to milk what I think is kind of the unsung rogues gallery of Cloak and Dagger in the sense that we get to play with mayhem. You know, after what happened in, in episode 10 of season one, everyone's really been affected. Even though it's eight months later, we're all kind of living our lives based off of what happened. So, um, you know, of course, Tyrone and Tandy are uh, a team, but you, you kind of see, since he's out on his own now, he kind of tries to take things into his own hands. So it's, it's gonna be pretty dope to see Tyrone grow up. I mean, if you think about where we left off season one, Tandy and Tyrone saved a lot of people, saved the city of New Orleans, and, you know, Tyrone is sort of fighting for his life at this point, and Tandy gives him the opportunity to sort of tuck away and hide away for a little bit so we can sort of figure out and, you know, basically grasp his groundings a little better. And Tandy is, you know, trying to live, live on the hope that she has grasped onto at this point in her life. She moved back home with her mom, started ballet, and we see a lot of that at the beginning of season two. And you're right, they sort of switched roles a little bit, and um, and it's really fascinating to see like how both of them cope with those scenarios because it's not something that they're used to at this point in their lives. So when they sort of come back together, and obviously we know that Tandy and Tyrone are better together than they are apart, when they come back together and start realizing and start digging a little deeper into what is happening in the city of New Orleans. We, I mean, it's just way more enhanced at this point. They now know what to do with their powers. They learn new tricks. They have new styles. They have new people that they can interact with to sort of get a little more information about what's going on in the city. And um, and it's just really spectacular to see their relationship and friendship grow. It's funny because I think some of the things they avoided in season one about being angry at each other for having the things the other have, now that we have reversed it, it creates a little bit of tension. And like you said, Tyrone, you know, he lived in this gilded cage and he resented his mother for smothering him and didn't like going to the school. And now he's gotten what he wished for and it might not be the best thing where it's been kind of pulled away. Tandy, on the other hand, has lived her cynical life where she could always just do drugs, hang out in the church, avoid life, and now she's chosen to engage with her mom in this lovely set we have here. Um, so I think it's created a new kind of tension between the two, and sometimes they find strength and help each other, and sometimes um, things get so intense and passionate between the two of them that it's it, they hurt each other. And I think it's just interesting. We're we're telling the story of two people who have no one like each other. I mean, it's it, it, it gets stronger, um, but with every strong relationship, there's good and the bad. It's the same as season one, you know, we, one episode we're on good terms, the next episode we're fighting, then we're back on good terms, you know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of the same thing this season, but they definitely do spend more time together and more time this season actually trying to save the city. So there's a lot more action this season. Season two starts eight months later. Um, so at the beginning of the season, Tyrone is still on the run. Um, and he resurfaces. And um, then at a certain point, Adina and Ty are both on the run. Um, so, uh, which is kind of an extraordinary thing as you see them bond in that way. Um, and then, you know, things unravel again a little bit and, and uh, Adina ends up, um, you know, continuing to, as she was during the eight months that Tyrone was, was gone, um, find ways to, to free her son's name, to free Tyrone's name, and to, to perhaps um, get justice for Billy's murder. You know, I was like, God bless Jeff Loeb, as we started talking about this. I expected him to be very rigid about what we could do. He was one of the first person to suggest a different city, and when we landed on New Orleans, um, it felt so right. So I think um, it was great, because I think the essence of Tandy and Tyrone are so important, but it's one of those weird kind of 
cinematic things where if you tried to represent it, you wouldn't get the flavor for it. So season one was great to really develop them as human beings and really understand, you know, you know the story very well. They're kind of smashed together at the beginning, so you don't understand the ingredients that are being smashed. You don't understand the peanut butter and the chocolate. I think that's what we did in season one. And so now season two, we get to have the Reese's Cup. Well, I think the same as season one. Um, that's what's so great about Joe Pekaski is a great way of taking something that's, you know, a couple decades old and bringing it into 2018 and making it current. And so he's done the same thing with, you know, my characters from the comic book as well. So um, we definitely have a different spin on it. But the thing that's great about it, too, if you look really closely, too, you can find a lot of hidden things that are always a throwback to the comic. I think this season, um, true to Joe Pekaski's form, uh, we're going to delve into some deeper and darker issues, some very relevant and topical issues. Uh, we have the human trafficking, we have gang violence, we have um, uh, myself and Tandy dealing with domestic abuse. Um, there's still lots of, you know, fun and, and like good fun and there's going to be a lot of action. But uh, true to form, true to this show's form, and one of the reasons I love it so much is that we're going to be tackling some complex issues at the same time and all of the characters are dynamic and complex and, and not uh, one-dimensional. I think it's the driving force of our show, you know, the, the writing. I feel like each episode, I, like I'm a fan of the show, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Each, each episode when I read the script, I'm just like, I can't believe we're actually doing this on television. Um, and, and I thank, you know, Freeform and Marvel uh, for allowing us to, to talk about such important things. You know, um, it's, you know, s some of our episodes are obviously just really dark, but I feel like it, it's, it's necessary for, for us to talk about it, especially, uh, you know, drug trafficking and, and, and woman trafficking. I mean, it's, it's literally slavery, like it's modern day slavery, and I feel like, uh, it's, it's really not talked about as, as much as it should and, and there's these these women that are just held against their will and kind of feel like there's no hope and you know that's that's a huge huge aspect of our show uh, of our show sorry I said yeah, show you know, <laughs> uh, exactly so uh, it's kind of just to me it's just showing that even though there's so much that goes on in our world there's there's hope uh, and and there's these Two young superheroes that that feel like even though, you know, we've we've been through so much, we will not stop fighting to make sure that that this city knows that there is hope and and you know there's someone here that that really cares.